This Month in Spartan History, presented by the Lansing State Journal. January 5th, 1976. Terry Furlow scores a school record 50 points in Michigan State's 105-88 victory against Iowa at Jenison Fieldhouse. Three days later, Furlow scored 48 versus Northwestern, and two days after that, he tally 42 more against Ohio State. January 18th, 1986. At the barn in Minneapolis, Scott Skiles accounts for 45 points in a loss against the Golden Gophers. Though the three-point line wasn't in effect at that time, the Spartan Stars sank 15 of his 20 field goals from long distance. After fouling out, Minnesota's sellout crowd gave Skiles a standing ovation. January 22, 1976. Michigan State basketball and baseball alum Robin Roberts is elected to baseball's Hall of Fame. He had 20 or more pitching victories for the Phillies for six consecutive seasons in the 1950s. John Coach didn't know I played baseball. I was up there on a basketball scholarship. And after the first year I played basketball, I went right in service, so I didn't have any baseball. Now the second year I was up there, the year I was the most valuable player in the, in the basketball in the state and everything. After that season ended, then I went out. And I had never talked to John about this, you know, because I was involved in basketball, I didn't work. So as the season ended, uh, I said to him one day, I'd like to come out for baseball, my coach. And he said, well, come on out. And he said, what do you play? And I said, well, I've played different things. What do you need? And he said, I need pitching. And I said, well, I can pitch. Uh, I remember going in the cage. We were inside, of course. It was still in early March. And I remember going to the cage for the first time. And, and I could throw. As it turned out, I had a good arm, you know. But I got in the batting cage, and I just popped a few fastballs after I got loose right, right off the bat. You know, not a case of worrying about <laughs> being in shape or anything. My legs were in good shape for basketball. And I popped a few fastballs, and the guys kept hitting the top of the cage where they couldn't get around on it, you know. And I remember John John saying, I think you might be able to help us. <laughs> and I thought, uh, well, that was nice to be old rascal. January 25th, 1975. Lansing State Journal sports writer Fred Stabley Jr. is the first to refer to Lansing Everett superstar Irvin Johnson as Magic. I was working for the State Journal at the time and Magic was a sophomore in high school, and I'd heard a lot about him in junior high school, but I'd never seen him play. And the first game he played, uh, I happened to cover, and that was out at Holt, and uh, Everett won by a very small score, one or two points, and uh, Irvin had 10 points, or 12 points and 10 rebounds, and fouled out of the game. I came back to the office, and people were asking, uh, well, how good was Irvin Johnson? And I said, well, he was just a bit, another big kid, you know, six foot five kid, He'd probably be a pretty good player one day. Well, the very next game I happened to cover was also Everett. I played Jackson Parkside at Everett, and Irvin had like 36 points, 20 rebounds, 15 assists, and 10 steals. And uh, Jackson Parks, that was supposed to be the best team in the South Central Conference, and Everett won it by maybe 30 points. So after the game, I, I'd never seen a high school player do anything like that, including Chet Walker and uh, uh, some of the other guys that I'd seen play here in the state finals at Jenison Fieldhouse. And I went down the locker room afterwards, and uh, he was sitting there with a bunch of his friends pat patting him on the back, and I said, uh, Irvin, we just got to call you something. And I said, uh, Dr. J's out because Julius Irving was taken and I said the Big E's out with Elvin Hayes I said uh, how about magic and he just looked up at me and you know he was just a 15 year old kid and he said uh, well, that's okay with me Mr. Stabley and so that's what happened. And January 30th 1971 Michigan State's basketball uniforms are stolen from the locker room at Ohio State's St. John Arena. We got in the locker room the players are starting to uh, disrobe and Managers getting the uniforms uh, set up and finds out that uh, several of the players don't have the uniforms. The uniforms are gone, and uh, so we, you know, we didn't know what to do. Of course, this was a great Ohio State University team. They're undefeated in the Big Ten. Of course, won the Big Ten championship, had not lost a game in the conference, and I was hopeful that they kind of just forfeit the game because we didn't have any uniforms to go back home. But uh, what happened was Fred Taylor and the athletic director at 
Ohio State allowed us to wear their road uniforms. And I can remember vividly that I could see some of our players, you know, when they dress for a game, they always, you know, want to look good. And so they're looking in the mirror, which they always do, and comb their hairs. I can, I looked at a few of them looking in the mirror with that Ohio State, that bright red jersey and the white letters, Ohio State and the numbers, and I could just see a couple of them thinking, well, I'm, I'm uh, John Havlicek and I'm Jerry Lucas, you know. It must have uh, made the uh, Ohio State team uh, overconfident, you know. They probably thought they were an inner squad scrimmage playing the second team because we were wearing Ohio State uniforms, and it turned out that we played an excellent game and, uh, and beat that team with, uh, with, their, with their road uniforms on. Among the Spartans celebrating birthdays this month is football alum and new co-defensive coordinator Harlan Barnett. He turns 48 on January 2nd. On January 14th, former hockey coach and athletics director Ron Mason marks his 75th birthday. In 2013, he was inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. January 17th is hockey alum Tom Ross's 60th birthday. Nearly 40 years after he last wore a Spartan sweater, he's still Michigan State's all-time leader in career goals and assists. Happy birthday on January 24th to the patriarch of Michigan State football's Bulla family, Hank Bulla. He'll turn 80 years old. And on January 30th, Spartan basketball's Tom Izzo will celebrate his 59th birthday. He's led six Michigan State teams to the Final Four, more than any other coach in Big Ten history. This Month in Spartan History For the Lansing State Journal, I'm Mike Pearson.